What's up, Big Bear Nation? Welcome back to the homestead. Compost production for large scale gardening can be very difficult, if not impossible, especially if you're trying to grow enough food for yourself some to put away for storage for the winter, and some for your animals to eat. Even with our tractor, we're not able to produce enough green matter and brown matter to be able to make all of the compost that would be needed to support both our large beds, our fodder beds, and our raised beds. Most of the people that we know that have large operations like this have to bring compost in and for us and for most people, that's not cost effective. It's, it's very cost prohibitive actually. And so here on our homestead, we are coming up with new ways and some old ways on how to prepare our gardens for the spring without using all of the compost. So the first thing that we'll be using and that we recommend that people use is a journal or some kind of program that will help you to keep track of everything that you've grown and where you grew it each year. Now, you can do something as simple as a garden diary that you are a garden journal that you just write everything down as far as what you've grown and where you grew it, or you can use something a little bit more digital like either an app or a program, we choose to use growveg.com. And we really like that program because one, it lets you build out your garden beds, you can print them off, and then also it archives in those spaces where you grew stuff. So if you hold true to what you planned in your plan on GrowVeg, then when you go to plan out your next garden for that same space, it will tell you, you planted this here, you don't want to plant that. Um, or it'll give you an option of, you know, you can't plant this here. So it's really nice to be able to do crop rotation, which is a must, especially when you're doing like raised beds or, or whatever, because you want to know what has been depleted from the soil. And you also want to know if there's anything that's been added to the soil. So another common practice would be companion planting. There are some plants out there that are considered feeders. They'll actually put nutrients into the ground for other plants to use. A good example of this would be something like a bean plant that is a nitrogen fixer. It pulls nitrogen out of the air and then pulls it into the soil and puts it into the soil. And if you plant corn with beans, Corn loves nitrogen, so it'll suck that nitrogen up out of the ground to produce more ears, they'll be sweeter, and they'll be larger and more plump. So you have some plants that will work with other plants to be able to provide those nutrients in the soil. Now, while both of those options are great and can be useful to help us prepare our gardens for the spring, we here on the homestead want to do something a little bit different. Surprise, surprise. We want to look around and identify the different resources that we have, whether they're things that we already use or things that we produce, as well as certain practices that we already have in place to see if any of those things can help benefit our gardens and get them prepared, put the nutrients back into the soil before the spring. We'll be looking at things like different manures, coffee grounds, um, animal carcasses, whether it be from our pigs or fish guts, things like that, stuff that we might get from the trap line this year. Um, we'll also be looking at like dead vegetation, so things like leaves and dead grass and hay, all different types of options to see what we can come up with and what is the most effective to prepare the gardens for the spring. So if this is something that you've thought about or considered 
doing before. Stick around with us this winter to see what kind of things we come up with and then again in the spring to see how those things turned out. Now if you've used some of these things that I've mentioned before or certain practices that have worked well for you to return nutrients back to your soil for your gardens, we would love to hear about those. Go ahead and put them down in the comments below. Thank you for stopping by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless and have a nice day.